Financial Accounting 7 Inventory, FIFO, LIFO, Weighted Average, and Specific Identification. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email and our phone number. And you'll find us on Facebook at St. Louis Test Prep. I'm going to jump over to a comprehensive example of these four types of inventory valuation. I'm going to start off with FIFO, but you'll notice at the top, all of this information stays the same for all four examples. So we started off with some beginning inventory, 500 units at $2,500 in red here at the top. And then during January, we made two purchases. One purchase was 600 units at $3,600. One was 160 units at $1,280. And if we take the amounts in dollars divided by the units, we get B divided by A, which is the cost per unit. And you can see the math here, how we did the cost per unit. So that's important to know. So we've got beginning inventory, this line, and we've got purchases, two purchases during the period. And you'll notice that I have in brown here net purchases. We purchased 760 units, and the dollar amount of those purchases was $4,880. So we have just the purchase portion here, which accounts for the units and the amounts here. In addition, we had some sales. The first batch of sales, if you will, was 370 units. The second batch of sales was 250. Our total units sold, the sum of those two, was 620. And what was left in any inventory was 1260 in blue, total units, minus 620 in green, so the units in any inventory was 640 and I put next to here units not dollars because it's important when you're doing these problems that you label things to know whether I'm talking about units or dollars. We're told in the question that the sales price per unit is 17. So if I take 620 total units sold times 17 I get total revenue. And I put a note over here that the revenue is the same for any inventory method. The changes are in ending inventory and cost of sales only. In other words, the, Im the inventory method has no impact on sales revenue. It does impact ending inventory and cost of sales. I've got a tax rate listed here that I don't need for this example, so I'm going to remove it. And what we'll see for each case is a cost of sales calculation and an ending inventory calculation. FIFO means first in, first out, which means the oldest units get sold first. And you'll note in my example that as we go forward in time, prices get higher, which is consistent with most cases in real life. With inflation, the overall increase in retail prices over time, inflation causes the price of units to go up, so it makes sense that the units purchased January 1st were $5 and units purchased January 26th were $8. This is beginning inventory, I should say. Beginning inventory January 1st had a cost of 5 Purchases on January 26th had a cost of 8 So prices are rising, which is the way they are almost all the time. So FIFO means that we sell the oldest units first, which means we sell the least expensive units first. So we sold 370 units. What cost do we need to put on those units? Well, it's a cost of five because the oldest units, the oldest set, was the beginning inventory of 500 at $5. So we sold 370 at a cost of $5 a unit, and if I multiply that across, I get $18.50. We had 500 units at 5, we sold 370 at 5. So now we need to talk about the 250 units, the second group that was sold. Well, for the 250, we've got 130 unsold from this group that we can sell at 5. We multiply across and get 
$650. This is total cost in dollars. I think that's important to know. We sold 130 at 5, which used up this entire amount, the beginning inventory. So the next group is we have 600 units we could sell at 6. So the remaining 120 we sold at 6. We multiply across to get 720. So we see that the 130 and the 20 is how we account for the 250 in sales. And you'll also note that the total units sold under FIFO equals the total units sold up here. And if we add all that up, we get the cost of sales for FIFO and black of 32.20. Now, I put a check figure over here and I put total cost to account for, and we can see that that ties, that 73.80, ties to the total dollar amount of inventory up here. And it brings up an important point that this 7380 has to end up in one of two places. It's either cost of sales or it's ending inventory. So if we just figured out cost of sales to be 3220, whatever's left has to be ending inventory. And you'll see here that cost of sales plus ending inventory adds up to 7380. Now we need to prove that ending inventory number of 4160. If I scoot down to ending inventory, I have some units remaining at 6. It's the 600 total less the 120 that I sold means 480 units left at 6 in ending inventory, 2880. I didn't sell any of the units at $8, so I have 160 at $8 or 1280, multiplying across. If I add up those totals, I get ending inventory of 4160, which proves this number. So, dealing with all our ending in, our beginning inventory and purchases in dollars is 7380, and that's divided by cost of sales of 3220 plus ending inventory of 4160. That's FIFO, first in, first out, we're selling the oldest units first. Let's look at LIFO, and you'll note that all this information is the same. All the information is the same. I'm going to get rid of this tax rate figure here. And I'm also going to copy down this total cost in dollars. To right here. Last in first out means we sell the newest units first, and the newest units are the most expensive. The newest units, the most recent purchases, are the most expensive. So we start with the newest units and we work our way backwards. We start with the newest units and we work our way backwards. So that's 370. We sold 160 units at 8, the, first, the newest group right here. Then to get to 370, we have to sell another 210, and that would be out of the bucket of units at 6. So we sell 210 units at 6. And then finally, for the last group here, the final 250 sold, we sell the, uh, another 250 at 6 out of this batch, if you will. If I look down here, I see that my total units sold was 620 which agrees to this number. I multiply across. I add it all up. I get cost of sales 4040 And I know from my check figure that I have to account for 7380 in total cost. Check figure total cost to account for. So if 4040 is cost of sales, 3340 in brown has to be my ending inventory. Now let's prove it, that that's our ending inventory for LIFO. So what do I have left? Well, I have 140 of the units at 6 out of this batch. I have all 500 units left at 5 because those are the oldest, those are the beginning inventory. Right here. I multiply across in both cases. I add it up, 
and I see I've got an inventory of 3340, which agrees to that number. And the sum of those two numbers is the 7380 that I need to account for up here. So what I've done is con conclude, calculate, excuse me, last in, first out cost of sales, last in, first out ending inventory. So we just did the LIFO inventory, cost of sales, and ending inventory. How about specific identification? Well, the problem that I got from the student set, that the first set of units that were sold, the 370, came from the beginning inventory, which is right here. And that the second sale came from the 600 units bought January 12th. So it's a little different from first in, first out, because we're talking about specific units sold from specific batches or groups. We don't sell all of these until we run out. We, only, we take 370 from this group and 250, I'm sorry, yeah, 250 from this group. We specifically identify which units and which costs that we, that we sold. So let's see what happens. First of all, cost of sale. We sold 370 from the beginning inventory group, which was 5. So 370 times 5 gets me my cost for the first group. And I'll put in dollars here also. We're told in the problem that the second sale of 250 was from the January 12th group of 600 units at 6. So 250 units times $6 a unit, there's my 1500 And if I add those two up, I get a cost of sales of 3350. Cost of sales specific identification. Now, I have to account for the entire 7380 total cost to account for in dollars. If my cost of sales is 3350 in black, my ending inventory has to be in brown 4030. Now let's prove that ending inventory. Well, if I sold 370 of 5, I have 130 left because the total was 500. If I sold 250 at 6, I have 350 at 6 left because that adds up to 600. And in fact, I think I linked, I, know, I didn't link these. And then none of the 160 out of 8 got sold, so I still have that. I multiply across. And I sum it up, and I get my 4,030 ending inventory. So I've proven that ending inventory amount, and I've also proven that, went a little too far down here, I've also proven that I've accounted for the entire dollar amount between cost of sales in black and specific ID in brown. The last one's weighted average. And there's an extra step here. You'll see that I added a line called weighted average per unit. The way we got that number is the 7380, the total dollars to account for, divided by the total units to account for, gives me a weighted average price of $5.86. That's what we're going to use for both cost of sales and in the inventory. The total units that we sold was 620. So if I take 620 times the 586, I multiply across to get a cost of goods sold of 36.31. I have to account for 73.80 total, which means this number has to be, another way of doing it is, the 73.80 in blue, total dollars, less the 36.31 in green, cost of sales, equals what my ending inventory should be. Now let's prove that in ending inventory. If I take the units in ending inventory right here in red, and I multiply it by the weighted average per unit, I multiply across and I do prove my 37.49. So what I just did was do weighted average. I calculated the weighted average per unit as the total dollars to account for divided by the units to get 586. 
and I use 586 for my cost of sales and 586 for my ending inventory. So what we've just done is, is proven for the same set of data what cost of sales and ending inventory would be for FIFO, first in, first out, selling the oldest units first. LIFO, last in, first out, selling the newest units first. Specific identification, identifying which units from which batch of inventory. And finally, weighted average, taking a weighted average and applying that to both cost of sales and ending inventory. That's the end of Financial 7. You'll now see that we have a page on our website for QuickBooks. We do monthly live chats and individual consulting with QuickBooks, which you'll find on the website. The YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You'll find a complete list of videos there for live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and live chat sessions for accounting and finance. Here's our website, stltest.net, our email address and our phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.